Hi everybody, this is Miss Peachy from your WCA Earth Science class and I am doing a short video tutorial on your rock and mineral lab. Um, there's some changes that I made to this so it's, I'm hoping that you really pay close attention to those changes as you're watching this, okay? <clears throat> so first of all, uh, this is from Unit 4, Lesson 3. And I just wanted to remind you that there's a lot of resources on my website, so we'll be using that in a moment here. So when you click on this, it's going to open up the Vega Viewer, which is, looks like this. And it does talk a little bit about the portfolio here. It tells you there are two parts. Um, you're going to have a worksheet to complete, and then you're going to use that worksheet to make a PowerPoint. So um, it gives you a sample of the portfolio document, and I've also created a template for you to use that I think you'll find to be very beneficial. Um, I do want you to not download the um, worksheet from the Vega Viewer because I changed that a little bit. And I also have a Microsoft Word version of it, which just is much easier to work with. Um, in general, the PDFs oftentimes won't save correctly, so then you have problems with stuff getting lost and not you know, saving as blank and having to redo things. And it's just easier if you do the uh, Word document. So let's go ahead and open that up. When you do that, it looks like this. And, whoops, that was not what I wanted to do. Let's go back a screen. Sorry about that. I accidentally clicked on some of the top of my window. What you want to do is click on the little arrow in the upper right corner and download this. And as you can see, it opens up at the bottom of my screen. Let me just show that to you real quick here. As a Word document, which we're going to open. And I'll be able to edit that. So I'll enable editing so that we can kind of see it. So now you can, you know, change things, add things here, and that's going to be um, helpful. <clears throat> so it gives you the option of three different mineral or rock pairs here. And the reason why they've chosen these is because one of the things you're going to be doing is looking at some of the ways in which these are used, either in your home or in industrial purposes, um, or for building materials, or something like that. Maybe used in, you know, electronics. So there's ways in which these things are used that are similar to each other. And so they've specifically chosen these because they have similar uses. So if you want to pick a different mineral or rock pair, please email me first, and then I can just check it out, make sure if it looks okay, you would be approved for that. So there's some changes I've made to this table because um, originally the table was specific for minerals and like granite and marble are two rocks. So they didn't really fit well with the characteristics given in the table. So the first col or the first row here, you're going to put down the name of your two rocks or minerals. For example, granite and marble. Then you're going to write down what they look like, um, their appearance, just a general description. <clears throat> I've changed this a little bit from the original. Originally, it just said hardness. Hardness is a term very specific to minerals. Minerals, we measure their hardness on a scale of 1 to 10 using Mohs hardness scale. Um, you don't really do that as much for rocks. So you might find the hardness value if it's a mineral, but if it's a rock, you're going to be looking more at durability. How strong is it? How easy does it break? That kind of thing. Um, again, this one originally just said luster, but luster is specific for minerals, and rocks have multiple minerals in them. So in this two rows, or two columns here, you're going to be um, discussing things like the luster, the color, crystal size. With rocks especially, we look at how large are the crystals and how easily visible are they. So other things that kind of go along with appearance, but more specific. And then I gave you an, an other properties column, something where you um, are looking at something else about the two different materials. Um, some more generic stuff for minerals would be like how reactive it is to acids, if it, is it magnetic, what's the density, 
Um, and then I get to ductility and malleability, which are two really big words. But they would go very well if you picked copper and aluminum. Um, these are just examples, by the way. You could do other things like um, bitmus coal and anthracite. You might look at like how much energy there is in them because they're used as fuel. So if that's the reason why you're looking at them, then you might want to look at, you know, things like how much energy do you get per um, amount of that material. Um, you may also look at things like how clean are they when they burn. So make sure you're picking stuff that makes sense for the two materials that you are looking at here. I also put things like melting point. If you're using metals to conduct electricity, you want to make sure the melting point isn't too low. And conductivity, which is also a useful property of, of metals. But again, this is kind of like these two are kind of your choices here. These are things that you might find um, are useful to you, which would be more specific to whatever you're doing. In this other notes here, I would include things like, um, and I'll put this in here, but like how, because you're going to use this information later, so it might be useful to you, like how abundant is it? Is it something that's really rare or really easy to find? How is it mined? How expensive is it? Those are some types of things you might want to consider there, okay? Okay, and then how do you use it? And this is kind of what you're basing your PowerPoint on. What is one way in which these, your rocks or minerals are used? We talked, kind of alluded a little bit to how copper and aluminum are used in wiring. So that's something to think about. Electronic components, bitmus, coal, and anthracite as a fuel source. Those are some things to think about. Granite and marble, building purposes, building materials. So Research that and figure that part out too, okay? Then you have part two, the analysis. So basically, this is like your note sheet that you're using to complete part two. So if, to make this a little bit easier for you, I've actually created a, a template for you to use. So if you go back to the website, you'll notice that underneath where it says Rocks and Minerals Word document, it says template you can use to help you. <laughs> so if you click on that, that is actually going to open up a, um, a Google slide presentation. I'll show that to you right over here if I can get that up. Here we go. Now you can't edit this because I don't want you changing my Google slide show, but you can actually um, make a copy of this. You can say file, make a copy, or most of you will probably go to file and download it as a Microsoft PowerPoint. And if you do that, if you download it as a PowerPoint, again, it shows up at the bottom down here for you to open. Drag it over to my window. Oops. Again, you're going to have to enable editing. Okay, sorry, it's just being slower. I can't click. And now you can edit this, right? You can change things in here. So when I edit it, the first thing you're going to do is change the title. I have rock or mineral one versus rock or mineral two. You'd put like marble versus granite. And then you have to come up with your question. This is what you're going to be looking at. Remember with the example that was given in the Vega viewer, let me just go back to that for a second. In their sample portfolio, oops, I lied. Sample portfolio presentation. I clicked the wrong one. They have aluminum versus tin, which is better for cans. So that was the question that they asked. They looked at one use that aluminum and tin are both used to manufacture cans. So which one's better? By the way, you're not allowed to use aluminum or tin. But you might say, you know, in what common usage does marble and granite have? What common usage does aluminum and copper have? What common uses does anthracite and bitmus coal have? Right? So when you figure out the common uses, which is better for that common use, whatever it is that you've researched, okay? 
Don't forget to put your name on that. I added that too because I need to know who's turning it in. And then you have a slide talking about the appearance. You've done this already, remember? This is on your sheet. You're just basically copying that information over to the PowerPoint. And then take, find a picture for each one of these guys. Hardness. Again, how hard or durable is your mineral? Again, you've done that before, right? It was on here, hardness or durability. Um, second, next one. I keep toggling back and forth here. Color or luster. Okay, or crystal size is another one we added here. But for each one of these, by the way, you look at the bottom and it says, you're taking the picture, you're putting the property, and then you're putting it at the bottom. Does this better support your question of comparison? In the case of the, the cans, you know, if we put the appearance, well, does that affect whether or not it would make a better can? Right? Does the appearance affect whether or not it would make a better whatever, whatever you're planning on doing? Sometimes it does make a difference. You know, if you're using, if you're trying to compare two things for jewelry or for decorative purposes of some kind, statues or something like that, yeah, appearance is going to have a, 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 you know, make a difference. Right? So appearance can make a big difference. Um, same thing here. Does hardness or durability affect your decision here? Color or luster or crystal size, that one. Other properties we talked about. Remember we talked about these, melting point, malleability, conductivity. Um, how does this influence your decision? How abundant is it in the Earth's crust? How readily available is it for mining? Is it super expensive? Well, it should affect your decision. And then finally, weighing all the properties of the rock or mineral that you picked, the rocks or minerals that you picked, which one are you going to go with and why? So explain at the end of the day what is the one that will be the best fit for whatever use you're planning on using it for and why is that? And then do give me your sources, not just your um, sources for your pictures, but obviously you're going to have to Google some of this information, so give me the sources for that information too. Okay, but this is all done for you. You guys can change the, you know, the theme here, or you can change the colors and stuff. That's totally up to you. And please delete all of my things in here. You're not going to write your stuff underneath of this. You're going to just go in here and just write over it, type over it. So my, my stuff isn't in there, okay? All right, so that's it. Those two things, worksheet, PowerPoint. Um, put them in the Dropbox. They go in the Dropbox, remember, in the next lesson. So go check this lesson off. The next lesson will be your Dropbox because Earth Science is weird like that. And um, hopefully that helps. If you have questions or concerns, you feel free to contact me at extension 2204 or send me a web mail message. Have a good day.